Welcome back to Christmas in July at the Fat Quarter Shop. We're finishing up today the free jelly snowflake pattern, so we're gonna put it all together. For our finishing, we need to cut six two and a half inch strips for our border and one six and a half inch square for the center. I'm gonna first start with the two and a half inch strips. I'm gonna put my line on my ruler at the bottom, square off my strip, And then I'm gonna cut three two and a half inch strips. I like to start at the five inch line and then go to two and a half. I feel like you get more accurate results that way. And then I can get one more two and a half. So we're gonna Set these aside and we're gonna come back to those in a second for our border. I have two little scraps here. I'm gonna just line up the folds. The most important thing is that you have the folds straight and on the ruler you line it up here and that means that when you unfold it, you will have a straight line instead of a curve. This is block one, and you can check out the video for that. These are block two, block three, and block four. So block four is more of a sashing block, so I'm gonna set that aside, and we're gonna pin these together, and I have them laid out according to my pattern so it looks correct, and I'm gonna put them right sides together and pin. And then we'll go to the sewing machine, put them on our design board, go to the sewing machine, sew it together, and you're gonna do four of your blocks like this. So on this one, I noticed I had my seams pressed the wrong way, so I didn't follow my pattern correctly. So what I did was I just clipped close to the seam and then pressed it the other direction so my seams would nest. And that is how, if you make a little boo-boo, that's how you fix it. And I do that all the time. It's not ideal, it's not perfect, but it's what happens sometimes when you're not paying attention. So. I've got everything pinned. We're gonna go to the sewing machine, stitch a quarter inch seam, and then we're gonna stitch it closed. And I'm sewing with a quarter inch foot. And now we're gonna go press. So I'm gonna set my seam and press according to my pattern. And I'm keeping them chain pieced together so that they don't move. And that way I don't make a mistake on where the placement is. And 
and I'm just putting the iron right on that seam. And since it's chain piece together, you don't have to even think about where it's going to go because it's already stuck together. And we're just going to put right sides together and we're going to pin all of our intersections nesting any seams that need to be nested. And then we're going to stitch this close and you're going to make four of these blocks. So let's go to the sewing machine. And when you get to a point where you can see this intersection, if you're stitching a quarter inch seam, you shouldn't have to worry about it. But if you're not, you kind of just want to make sure you don't go too far and you don't chop the point off. So as you go, I can see that intersection and I just make sure I'm on the right side of it. And there it is again. And then sometimes I'll look before I leave my sewing machine and just make sure I don't chop any of these points off. And now I can press. I'm setting my seam. When you set your seam, you're just pressing over it before you press to one side and that locks your stitches in. And it's less likely to crease. Then you can do an overall press if you would like. And then we can trim up our little block, get all of the little threads off. So from here, I'm just gonna trim all the little threads off the edge. This is optional step. You do not have to do it. The goal of this is just to get the block really straight and to get all those threads off. Now we're going to assemble your quilt. Lay everything out. Make sure you've got all your squares and all your units in the right place and assemble it. Um, that would take way too long to show on videoing. So we're going to go ahead, stop filming, put the quilt together and come right back and show you how to put those borders on. Now that you have your four snowflake blocks made, you're going to lay those out with your four icicle blocks and your fabric A square. Lay out all of your pieces, make sure you like the placement of your colors, and sew it all together and your quilt top is complete and we can add our borders. Now get the six strips that you cut for your borders and we're gonna join these together on the diagonal, but the very first thing I'm gonna do is make the salvage area straight, and you will see why in the next section that I do that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want a straight line and I want the salvages off. So I'm gonna take this, a friction pin, and some pins to the sewing machine, and we're gonna sew our borders together end to end to make it all one big piece. So first I'm going to pull two strips from my stack and set the others aside. 
And the way that I join my strips is slightly different than what other people do. So I'm going to show you my method. I'm going to open the strips and put the first two right sides together. And when I put them together, I leave a little gap right here. So I don't put the strip right like this because when you do that, you can't see where you should end. So I put it a little bit over and I'm gonna pin twice. And then I'm gonna draw a line. And I'm gonna stitch directly on that line. And when you're stitching, you will see that you can see where you should stitch to because if you don't show that or you don't have that open, you might, this fabric under here might get um, swept under there. And then I'm gonna keep joining. Here you wanna make sure you flip up so you've got the right side. And you're just gonna keep adding your strips. And when you cut your selvage earlier off, that gave you a straight line so that you could line it up right here. So I'm gonna do the same thing and have one big strip. Now we can go press. So now I have one big long piece and I just go to my ironing table, remove my pins, and then I just cut between each one. And you can do this with rotary cutter or scissors, this next part. But what I do is I use scissors and I cut up and then across about a quarter inch. And I'm gonna do that on all of these. And then we're gonna press, so I'll show you how I do the seams. I like to set my seam flat first. Press to one side. I usually finger press. And then I'm gonna press this seam open. And the reason that I press open on binding is if you put your binding across, you're gonna have a bigger bump here and a bigger bump here and if you press open, it will look smoother on the front of your quilt. And then you do the same thing with all of your seams, and then if you have a crease in the center, you can iron that out now. So we'll go ahead and do that, and then we will be right back. So now we have all of our border stripped together into one big piece, and the side border, I'm gonna attach the two side borders first, and then the top and bottom borders. I'm gonna show you on video how to do a side border first, and then you do all the rest the same way. So I am going to put a pin at the zero mark, and I'm gonna to get to 46 and a half. So I'm gonna mark at 30 so that I can finish. And this is the only time I ever use a mat is for measuring borders. 
so this should be 46 and a half and then I'm going to cut my strip. I'm not going to cut exactly at 46 and a half. So you can see that I have, and I'm going to remove the center pin, I have two pins together that measure 46 and a half and I'm going to put a pin in the center and I never cut exactly at those measurements and I will show you what, why next. So you're putting your border and your quilt right sides together so that you see this seam on the back. And the first thing I will do is where my pen marked, I'm gonna pin this in place on one side. I'm gonna go all the way to the other side. I always do the very outside first. Pin this in place. And then where my center pins are, I'm gonna pin there. Now, I would never recommend going to the sewing machine and just slapping your border on because your quilt is not gonna come out straight. Now from here, you just ease in the rest and just pin in place all the way down. And now we're gonna to go to our sewing machine. So when I'm sewing a border on any quilt, I will put the border side on top because that makes all of your seams go through easier. And I put the weight of the quilt on the bed instead of on the floor, and that way you're not pulling. So as much weight as you can get off of the table is great. And I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam and I'm gonna start stitching on the part that doesn't have a quilt below it. I'm going to stitch a little bit through. I'm going to back stitch to secure it. I do always back stitch when attaching borders and I know a lot of people don't do that but that is something that I always do. And just stitch all the way to the very other side. When you get to the end, I'm gonna back stitch, and then we will go press. So now I'm gonna set the seam all the way across the border. Setting your seam will just secure your stitches and it will make it easier when you press toward the border for it to lie flat. Then I finger press out toward the border and press and you want to keep the edge of your iron right here right on the seam then I will move my iron And then I will trim the edge and that's going to give me a perfectly straight and if you had if you had trimmed your borders before it might end up a tiny bit wavy on the outside and you would never want that and you're going to repeat on the opposite side and then you will follow the instructions for the top and bottom border size and attach those 
Thank you for joining us for Christmas in July with Jelly Snowflake at the Fat Quarter Shop. I can't wait to see all of the quilts that you make with our free pattern, and I'll see you next time. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more free videos just like this.